Welcome to Differential Equations. This first video in our Differential Equation series is going to introduce exactly what this course is about as we answer the question, what is differential equations? In other words, what exactly are we trying to accomplish as we work through this course? Let's start answering that question by defining a differential equation. A differential equation is an equation relating an unknown function and one or more of its derivatives. Some examples of this might be something like y prime plus 2y equals 0. This is an equation that uses both the function y and its derivative y prime. Another example might be y prime prime minus 2y prime plus 2y equals 0. Notice this function connects y to both its first derivative and its second derivative. And in fact, we can even have equations that look like this, maybe x squared y prime prime minus xy prime plus 2y equals 0. And not only does this relate y and its derivatives, but y is a function of x, which also appears in the equation. Our goal with these differential equations is to find the function, usually that would be y, to satisfy the differential equation. Kind of stealing from algebra what we were trying to do in algebra. In algebra, we would solve equations like 2x plus 5 equals 17. And our goal was to find the x that made this a true equation. And we did that by subtracting 5 and dividing by 2. And we found out the solution was x equals 6. And being a solution meant if I plug that solution into the equation, it would give me a true equation. 2 times 6 plus 5 should equal 17. And sure enough, 2 times 6 is 12 plus 5. And if we add, we get 17 equals 17. The solution of x equals 6 is the solution that made that algebra equation a true equation. It was satisfied. So in differential, equations, we might have a differential equation like y prime equals 2x times y. And through a series of methods, you might find out that the equation y is equal to a constant times e to the x squared power. Well, if that's truly the solution, that should be that y equals c e to the x squared should make this equation true. But notice there's not just a y, there's a y prime in it. So let's figure out what y prime is. e to the x squared the derivative is e to the x squared. Using the chain rule, we have to multiply by 2x. And then we still have that constant in there. So y's derivative is 2c times x e to the x squared. And notice when I plug those into our values, the original equation, y prime is 2c x e to the x squared is equal to 2x times y, which is c e to the x squared. And through a little bit of rearranging, we do find out that these are exactly the same expression. And so therefore, my solution is the correct solution. 
So ultimately, our goal through this course is to take that black equation, y prime equals 2xy, and through a series of steps, we're hoping to find the y equals equation that satisfies it or makes it true. But for today, we're not actually going to be solving the differential equations. Instead, we're going to verify the function that somebody else found for us satisfies the differential equation. So for example, we might be told that y equals 2x to the 1 half minus x to the 1 half natural log of x satisfies the differential equation 4x squared y prime prime plus y equals 0. Well, because we see that y prime prime there, we're going to need the first and second derivatives here, which we can quickly calculate. The first derivative, uh, x to the 1 half, drops down to x to the negative 1 half as we move the 1 half out front and the 2's divide out, minus. We've got a product rule here. So I'll take the derivative of the first, which is 1 half x to the negative 1 half natural log of x plus, but actually as I distribute that negative through, it's going to be minus. The derivative of the second, the derivative of natural log is 1 over x times x to the 1 half. If I do a little bit of cleanup here, we get x to the negative 1 half minus 1 half x to the negative 1 half natural log of x, minus subtracting exponents, we get x to the negative 1 half, which means we actually have a like term. Let's go ahead and combine those. They subtract out to 0, so I'm just left with negative 1 half x to the negative 1 half natural log of x. That's my first derivative. Our differential equation uses the second derivative, so we're also going to find y prime prime. We've got a negative 1 half out front of everything. Then using the product rule, x to the 1 half becomes negative 1 half x to the negative 3 halves times the natural log of x, plus the derivative of natural log is 1 over x times x to the negative 1 half. And again, a little bit of cleanup. We get negative 1 half times negative 1 half x to the negative 3 halves natural log of x plus x to the negative 3 halves. Now that we have all the pieces, we're ready to show that the, our equation y, which we started out with, is going to satisfy this differential equation that we were given. The differential equation says 4x squared times y double prime. Well, y double prime was the negative 1 half times negative 1 half x to the negative 3 halves natural log of x plus x to the negative 3 halves. The differential equation continues by saying plus y. Well, y is what we had up there at the beginning. y was the 2x to the 1 half minus x to the 1 half natural log of x. And the differential equation says that should equal 0 if I simplify it. Let's simplify it and see if it does, in fact, equal 0. First thing I see is the 4 divides out with the 2, leaving behind 2x squared. I'm going to bring that negative out front and distribute the negative 2x squared onto both terms. Negative 2 times negative 1 half is 1. x squared times x to the negative 3 halves, if you add the exponent, becomes x to the 1 half. Natural log of x. Negative times a positive is a negative. 2x squared times x to the negative 3 halves is going to be x2x to the positive 1 halves. 
And then just distributing the plus through the second part gives us plus 2x to the 1 half minus x to the 1 half natural log of x. And sure enough, you notice 2 minus 2 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. And the whole thing equals 0 as expected. So it does turn out that this equation that was given to us in part a here, 2x to the 1 half minus x to the 1 half natural log of x, satisfies the differential equation 4x squared y prime prime plus y equals 0. We have verified the solution satisfies the differential equation. Let's try another one. Let's try y equals 1 over some constant minus x. And let's show that satisfies y prime equals y squared. Well, to help us out with our derivatives here, I'm going to rewrite this as y equals c minus x to the negative 1. Then taking the derivative, because that first derivative shows up in our differential equation, we get negative c minus x to the negative 2 using the chain rule times the derivative of the inside, which is negative 1. And negative, negative makes the whole thing positive. So now we're ready to plug in to our differential equation. The differential equation said take the derivative, which was c minus x to the negative 2. And it says that should equal our y, which is c minus x to the negative 1 all of that squared. And sure enough, if we use our exponent properties, we get c minus x to the negative 2 equals c minus x to the negative 2. And it checks out. So the solution given to us does satisfy that differential equation. So that's what we're mainly looking at today, is this idea of proving that a solution satisfies a differential equation. But before we get away from actually just showing that solutions satisfy a given equation, I want to take a look at one of the reasons we study differential equations in the first place. We can do some modeling. with differential equations. In other words, math was designed to model the real world to make predictions and conclusions about unknown things. Differential equations, which connect variables or functions with their derivatives, come up quite a bit in the study of physics, chemistry, population growth, financing, et cetera. And that's what we're going to take a look at is just setting up some differential equations. For example, the time rate of change, or how fast things are changing with respect to time, of the volume of water draining from a tank is proportional to the square root of the depth We'll call the depth y, and let's call the volume v of the water in the tank. What this is telling us is water is draining from a tank, but the more water you have in the tank, the quicker it's going to drain because there's more water pressure pushing down on it. When there's not as much water in the tank, it's not going to drain as fast. And that relationship is actually a proportional relationship. And what proportional means is there is some constant times the thing it's proportional to. So putting that together, the time rate change of the volume 
That's the change in volume with respect to time, dv dt, is proportional, means it's equal to a constant times the square root of the depth of the water in the tank. And you may remember dv dt, another way to write that is v prime equals k times the square root of y. Both ways writing it mean the same exact thing. You'll find most of the time as I'm writing, I prefer the prime notation unless it's convenient to write the dv dt notation. Both mean the same thing, though. Let's try modeling another situation. The time rate of change of an investment, we'll call the investment P, you invest P dollars, is proportional to the original investment. In other words, the rate of change, the derivative of the investment p with respect to time, is equal to some constant times the original investment. How much you gain is proportional to the original investment. Or you could write that as p prime equals kp. And if you think about an investment, what controls how much money you're earning in that investment? It's the interest rate. k here would represent the interest rate. So you could almost write this as p prime equals the interest rate times p. And that would be the differential equation that models the investment of your money in the bank. Let's try one more. You've probably heard of Newton's law of cooling. It actually comes from a differential equation. Newton's law of cooling says that the time rate of change of some temperature of something, we'll call the temperature T, is proportional to the difference between the temperature of a thing and the temperature of the surrounding air. This is a differential equation. The derivative of the temperature with respect, I should use a capital T for temperature, lowercase t for time. The derivative of the temperature with respect to time is proportional, which means some constant, times the difference between the temperature of the thing and the temperature of the surrounding air. And let's just use A for the surrounding air. And solving this differential equation actually generates Newton's law of cooling. We don't have the skills yet to solve it, but we will very, very soon have the skills to solve this differential equation. But I wanted to illustrate how we can use differential equations to model relationships between functions and their derivatives to model real world situations, things that are constantly changing. I have one last thing I want to hit then before we wrap up this video. Not so much mathematical, but some vocabulary that can help us as we work with differential equations. One thing you'll hear us talk about is the order of a differential equation.
the order is the highest derivative in an equation. For example, a first order differential equation might be something like y prime plus 3y equals the cosine of x. You'll notice that there is a first derivative in this equation that's a first order differential equation. A second order differential equation would be something like y prime prime minus 7y prime plus 2y equals e to the 3x. Notice it's got a second derivative in it. That's the highest derivative. It is a second order differential equation. We're going to solve both of these different types of equations in this course. We'll start in this first chapter just doing first order differential equation, because those are the most simple. And then in our future chapters, we'll look at second order differential equations and higher order differential equations as well. Second vocabulary word I want to know is what's called ordinary. Ordinary differential equations. Ordinary differential equations are ones where the unknown function depends on a single variable. For example, x squared y prime prime, or I could even say d squared y dx squared, the second derivative of y with respect to x plus 2 dy dx minus 8y equals the natural log of x. And what you really need to notice here is where y is a function of x. It only has one variable in it. We're just taking the straight up derivative of y with respect to x. That can be contrasted with what are called partial differential equations. And a partial differential equation is one where the unknown function depends on multiple variables. And so then you'll start to see things like the partial of u with respect to t is equal to some constant times the second partial of u with respect to x. And as you might expect, partial differential equations are more complex and involved than ordinary differential equations. And so in this course, we're going to focus exclusively on ordinary differential equations of first order and higher ordered and applications thereof. And then you can take another course in your future study of mathematics of partial differential equations. And that course will focus on how those are different and more exciting than just the ordinary differential equations. But for now, it's your turn to practice some differential equations. You're going to be taking a look mainly at verifying that a function satisfies some differential equation by looking at the function and its derivatives and plugging them into the function. Take a look at those, practice them, and let me know if you have any questions.